Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to leading our own way. I love saying that. I can't think of another way to start the podcast intros, if I'm honest. I, I really do like saying welcome back to leading our own, our own way. Maybe I'm just not um, original enough to think of something else and cool, but welcome back to leading our own way. I'm really excited for today's guest. But before we begin, look, I've added a few things to the studio. I went and got, I can't believe I actually didn't think of this earlier. I needed a bigger, more... I don't know, something for the studio. So if you're watching on YouTube and Spotify, you can see I've got my album cover that you can see on Spotify and, you, and uh, Apple. Uh, but this is the front cover that I use on YouTube. Now, if you wonder why I'm doing the two separate ones, probably not a good business strategy, but who cares? I love the purple. I accidentally came across it when I was making this. And this, this the one with me walking down the street, didn't really look great on YouTube if I'm going to admit it so i'm kind of doing the both maybe i'm wrong but anyway today i want to welcome another amazing guest i met i met um this person this lovely person um back when i was doing nurturing leadership another podcast and sorel salulu i kind of laugh when i say salulu You'll understand why at the beginning of the episode. Uh, but Sorel Salulu um, is out of Perth, is a psychologist out of Perth, Australia, and runs a, a business called Honouring Minds. Um, now, I came across her when I was, um, like I said, doing the uh, Nurturing Leadership podcast, and she she just talks and aligns with me about everything I say about the human side of leadership. This episode is, we just delve into leadership that's a very, very deep level. Um, and we talk about honoring minds. We talk about my scenario that I've not really opened up to on the podcast uh, very openly since I've been doing this for the last six months. By the time this episode goes out, um, we'll be doing it for six months, um, give or take anyway. Uh, sometimes I realign the order of episodes. But um, another flip side of things, as well as um, talking to Sorel about the human side of leadership and her journey into it, um, I'm also interviewing her husband. Not filmed it yet, um, but we're going to film it next week. And uh, it's an, an amazing story. We do go into that a little bit deeper into the episode. So uh, tune in towards, it's a bit nearer to the end on that one, uh, but a fascinating story of his big background and how they met and why they met and uh, how they align as a couple as well. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's um, leading our own ways, becoming a bit of a family affair. I've had a couple of, I've had a father and daughter. I've had a couple of um, uh, two actually children with the guests um you'll have already probably met uh the the mother and daughter duo that i've had as well and uh don and lauren um just amazing i i just love it jake and jess the, the husband and wife as well and i keep forgetting like with all the guests that i've done but anyway we've done quite a few so i'm really excited and if you're wondering why uh, my hair's a little bit uh looking a bit more fresh uh, on this intro than i do on the episode with sorel well i just had a haircut yesterday and normally i do in the interview after the intro sorry after the interview um but there was a couple of upload issues so i had to do it not that you need to know it but i'm very open and honest about our vulnerabilities which I do on purpose because I want people to feel safe in making mistakes and getting things wrong or just being vulnerable in, and, and, and you know, not going smoothly in the workplace. And we, we do go into that in this episode too. Um, but yeah, I had a haircut, so I look a bit more fresh. Um, but I left the photos up. This is Sorel, as you can see. A beautiful person. And um, so, yeah, if you're interested in leadership, you're interested in her individual journey too. But uh, predominantly we talk about leadership and uh, uh, the industry. And um, yeah, it's just... Very interesting. So it's close to my heart. I know it's close to Sorel's heart too. Um, and that's what she does on a daily basis. So she's a lot more experienced than me in that regard. So anyway, tune in. I'll stop talking. We'll be right back after the intro and uh, enjoy. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe and then we can lead together forever. Good evening, Sorel Salulu. How are you? I'm good, Andy. How are you? That smirk <laughs> came because you knew I was going to get nervous about saying that double S name, didn't you? <laughs> I was waiting for you to trip up on it. So, yes, it was definitely a um, pre preempted smirk. Did I do okay? <laughs> you did wonderfully. 
<laughs> well, good evening, Sorel Salulu. Um, thanks for joining me on Leading Our Own Way. I, I really appreciate you um, coming on the show. And it's, I feel like it's been coming for a long time because we've kind of known each other for probably, what, over a year maybe? Um, yeah. With my previous endeavor with Nurturing Leadership, which stemmed from my book, um, I think we came across each other because of the, um, the connection with like the human side of leadership, let's say. I like, mm -hmm. that's how I like to put it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I've been following your journey and um, I, I'm so glad you're here and so welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. It's really lovely to be in this space with you. Yeah, thank you. So we, I, I, I have a bit of a tradition. Um, I asked the question, how are we leading our own way? So Sorel, how, how can you tell me how you're leading or tell us how, you, how you're leading your way? I am leading with connection. Um, I've realized that that is one of the reasons, one of the purposes for me being here on earth is to um, help people to remember that we are a connection focused species and we really rely on connection mm -hmm. to understand ourselves, to understand the world around us, to um, navigate life. We need each other. So um, yeah, that's how I'm leading my own way, Andy, is through connection and connecting with my kids, connecting with my husband, connecting with my the people around me and really educating people on how important connection is and how to do it well. Yes, I love it. And we'll dive deep into the art of the definition of connection very soon. And I love how you started off with that. Um, what are you doing professionally in your world then and how, you, how are you in this space? I am now, well, I'm a psychologist by trade. So I've been working as a psychologist for many years now. And um, I am in love with the work. I love to work with people. Um, I started off in the drug and alcohol uh, space and uh, there was nothing more rewarding for me than to sit with someone who potentially has many stigmas placed on them by society and mm. really connect with them and understand who they were underneath all the labels they were given um, and to help them to see their value and their worth um, as well. So that's where I started. And then I, um, I, I moved into more attachment focused therapies and understanding how the relationships that we have with our caregivers from such an early age really shape who we are and how we experience life and how we have relationships ourselves as adults. And then I've, um, yeah, I've worked across the lifespan ever since. So I, I honor my psychology background. Um, I value it very much, but I'm now also moving into a, um, a leadership consulting role. So I am moving into leadership coaching and specializing in what I call connection focused leadership. Love it. Yeah. That's, that's another way of what I said, converting it to probably my language would have been that, that suppose that human side of leadership, right? You sure. know what I mean? Um, what inspired you to make that switch then that, that crossover? Firstly, experience. Um, so working, uh, feeling experienced enough in myself, um, getting to a point where I felt like I could offer uh, systems more um, instead of individuals more, if that makes sense. So yeah. um, my own experience um, developing and my own skills developing, but also working within organisations, it really got me um, aware of how organisations function and the influence that leadership has and how leadership can be um, incredibly effective and incredibly ineffective and mm -hmm. almost harmful. So um, actually I would take away almost and just say harmful. Um, so my, my, my internal experience, but also my experiences working in organizations and then working um, with, with the general public and their experience coming into the therapy room, telling me about their experience at work. 
and how how difficult it is to transition back to work if they've had a leave of absence with mental health or um, difficulties and, and needing to um, take time away for family circumstances or um, workers' comp uh, issues. So, yeah, a, a, a bit of both, a bit of internal experience and um, and external factors. That was going to lead on to my next question. I, th- I feel like what you're doing is kind of aligning with what I'm doing, but to the side and obviously with your own spin and flavor onto it. But I went through something to make that, have that perspective, right? Mm. But sorry, yeah, that perception of myself, but also the perspective of, of the other places uh, um, and how I don't even know how to say it really. So I know I why I did it, but I want to do, dive into you. And you've just mentioned there about the, the experiences what happened for you personally to then make that shift in your mindset? I think it was in particular, um, it was certain training that I was having. I had some really intense supervision by a particular um, psychologist who trains in a particular way. And that intense supervision over the period of a, a year or so, it really fundamentally changed how I worked as a psychologist, but not only that, how I saw myself and how I saw the world around me. It, it had such a profound effect on me, um, that I was never the same. Um, you know, they knew that saying once, once something can be seen, can never be unseen. That is that, that was what happened. I just had such a profound, supervisory experience um, by someone who really knew the power of connection and how to navigate the complexities of of, um, of human interaction and navigate it in a way where he held me in mind all the time and and was able to uh, yeah help, help me learn and embody those skills within me. So then when I then um, left his super supervision and um, started working, um, for, for myself and then moved into a particular organization. I was seeing interactions between people in organizations from, you know, an upper management down level that I thought there is so much complexity to this that no one really is under, no one's really picking up on, no one's really understanding. And, um, I, I could almost see it from a zoomed out view, if that makes sense, Andy, like, um, I wasn't just seeing it from my own perception. I could step out and see it from everyone's perception and the impact it was having on everyone. And I started to question gently, but I started to question the leadership in that organization and ask why we were operating in certain ways and why we were doing certain things and, and what the, what the impact on that could be and, and what their reaction was that was going on for them, for them to, um, for them to want to uh, cause that particular decision. I became concerned about some of the reactions that were happening, causing decisions rather than the reflections that really needed to happen. Mm. So that time in that organization really cemented to me that I have this ability now to see see these patterns that can happen in organizations that perhaps go unnoticed or people just aren't aware of. And um, in the end, I ended up doing a lot of reflective um, practice work with that organization. So they, I formed good relationships with the leadership team and, and we ended up doing a, a across the board reflective practice uh, approach and um it, I, I found it was really, really beneficial for them to start stimulating thinking about things in different ways and thinking about themselves and how what they bring to um, their organisation in different ways, that the yeah. work impacts them and they impact the work. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And with some of those effects that you saw on people, um, did, did those effects ever, did you ever experience those personally in the workplace? I think I, I've certainly experienced um, interesting interpersonal dynamics in the workplace. 
Um, and I would say that I've always been someone who I think I've been uh, labeled as someone who's easy to work with. <laughs> um, I'm quite social, so, socially, um, like I can get along with anyone really. And I've always yeah. had that skill, but I think that time with that particular supervisor, it really, um, it really made me, it enhanced my ability to connect with people or even distance myself from things that I just need, didn't need to be involved in. Like it, it had allowed me to know how to keep myself safe in a workplace, how to have relationships with people without and have good boundaries with people, how to communicate well um, and how to not take things personally. Like it was such a profound experience for me that, it almost created this robustness for me in a workplace from then on, if that makes sense. So are you saying this was a negative experience, but gave you a positive result in how you then went forward in your career? Um, I would say that the time in that organization, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly negative for me because I could, I could, I, I could, <sighs> At the time, I was a, um, I, my son was only 18 months old and I had to travel a, a lot and I had to, um, I was a psychologist of a team and um, I had to really, it was the first time that I had to really start to put myself, really think what do I want to get out of this workplace? And how am I going to firstly make sure that I'm working in a way that is uh, ethical in the, in the way that I need to work? But secondly, how am I going to um, um, ensure that all of the clients that we're working with are re getting really good outcomes? Um, and some of some of the decisions around that the leadership were making weren't aligning with that. So it was one of probably the first time in my career that I had to go. I had to really speak up for myself and 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 put boundaries in for myself and say I'm not no I'm not going to do that and and be okay with putting boundaries in and um, not feel like I needed to do it because it was being asked of me. So I think it was a time that really got me um, feeling a lot more stronger in in what my integrity is and what my how I'm going to show up at work without being affected by uh, the dynamics of what was going on around me. If that makes sense. It, it does. Yeah. I, I, yeah. No, it totally does. I, I think um, when I think when I went through my workplace trauma, I, I think putting those boundaries, it was really hard for me because I was scared of having a target on my back, even though the target was already on my back. If that yeah. makes sense. I feel like yeah. I probably feared it getting worse, but it was getting worse every day anyway. But you obviously always have that hope don't you that each day will get easier but in reality it, it never did and I've never really spoken about it on air it's in my book but yeah you like with chapter one we collect it I'm only saying this because you said something before about how you you sh um did you mention before about sharing stories you got stories together at dip what did you say earlier I forgot what it was but I've I resonated that beam to my chapter one where I collected stories from around the world with my co with Mike my co-author and we we what we the reason why we did that was because we wanted the we wanted the leadership to understand the impacts on people's lives mm. if they don't lead with purpose hence the mm -hmm. title but in order to get to purpose they have to obviously understand themselves at a deep level and they have to work on themselves heavily in order to become to work present in order to form connection for me connection is feeling heard feeling valued feeling seen right yes which then leads to hope yes. so just having those things doesn't mean connections can be formed but it leads to hope mm -hmm. and hope that connection can be formed it still doesn't mean it's going to connect because that other person has to be ref, ref, feel that also uh, mm. But in order to any of that to happen is to where I feel like your honoring minds touches base on is you've not said these words, but I feel like it does. It's going to the root cause. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And rather than being reactive, because you've used that word reactive, I want to go to root cause. And I actually said this to a principal today at one of the schools that I worked at. And 
in order for him to go to school every day to inspire those he's supposed to inspire, he has to go to work present, which means a lot of heavy work, even just morning routine mm -hmm. um, a, 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 as a small part of his life. Obviously, you have to look at the big picture. But um, I forgot where I was going with it now. But yeah, the, the stories I really wanted to show, I wanted the lead, I wanted leaders and colleagues to understand that this is the impact on people's lives. If you mm -hmm. just lead your way uh, and mm -hmm. just lead your own way in a, in a micromanaging sort of way or an egotistical sort of way, um, you don't understand what's going on in each individual home. There's another art mm -hmm. of connection. Just say, hey, are you mm -hmm. okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Or hey, what's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Or, or just sitting down and have a conversation, an innocent one, you can get so much information um, yes. off them in, 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 in just having a cup of coffee sort of moment. Mm. You don't have to have mm -hmm. a sit in an office and make it serious. Just sit, have a coffee with somebody um, mm -hmm. and then move around and do it with all the different colleagues. Anyway, I'm sure we'll get deeper into that. And and then chapter two was about personal development, just putting some strategies into the place to help these in the moment of bullying or workplace trauma or whatever it may be. And then chapter three was like the leadership side of things, the human side of leadership and, you know, leading with purpose, talking about relationship, talking about connection, talking about lead with intent and observe with intent and things like that. Um, I'm not here to obviously plug the book, but that's, that was the reason why we went into the book and it was therapeutic for me because somebody said, yeah. write this down. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to lie. I was like a bit girly. I'm not going to do that. Nah, you know, that old macho side of me came out. But then I really saw the power in it. Mm. And um, yeah, I don't know. What, what's the def, what, should, what do you reckon your definition of connection is? I mean, I've kind of just told you mine, I suppose. But what would you, if you could put it into a few words, how would you look at it? The words that come to mind for me that are really important for connection are warmth, mm. genuine curiosity, and a shared willingness to understand the other person's mind. Yeah, I, like I think, it. yeah, I think that's the fundamentals for connection. And it applies to whether you're connecting with your children or whether you're connecting with your partner or whether you're connecting to someone at work. Yeah. Yeah. Something to think about for sure. Um, all right. So you're, Sorry to interrupt you, but no, I think no, it's please. important when I'm thinking about connection, it's understanding that there are, if it's two people, there are two minds. And it's about creating a bridge between those two minds. So you and I, I come with this whole different mind because my mind has been shaped by all this other experience all this experience I've had in my life and you come to me and your mind has been scaffolded and shaped by all the experiences you've had in your life so we've got two very different minds mm -hmm. and the purpose of connection is to meet those minds together and try and understand each other's mind so if we were working together or you was my boss or I was your boss what would you hope that I would do to connect with you on a deeper level then. So we could I... make the relationship thrive, but also the business thrive. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.